do not place access points in hallways. It's a rule. In this little short training video, we're going to talk about why you should not put access points in hallways and give you some examples. It's part of the Wireless LAN Design Rule series. Let's get started and just talk about why people want to put access points in hallways. Part of the reason was a long time ago, decades ago actually, people wanted to put APs in hallways because what we thought Wi-Fi needed was a lot of coverage. We wanted to cover a big area. And if we put them in the hallway, we could see, see that AP from a long ways away, and we thought we were getting something really good. And they were easy to do. It was easy to put in hallways, easy to get access. The problem is it doesn't work as good as you think it should. We're going to give you some examples inside ECHOW so you can see the difference of what happens when you use an AP in a hallway or when you don't use an AP in a hallway. Hopefully at the end of this little video, you'll feel a lot better about not putting your APs in hallways. Well, to start, we have an access point and it's sitting on top of a football field. Now I picked an American football field because they're pretty easy to do work in. You can go and take an access point, put it in the middle, and every line is about 10 meters, 10 yards apart. And so you can see if we take an access point, that's an omni access point and it covers in all directions. That's what it's supposed to do. If you look at the coverage pattern, and I'm gonna come over here and do so. And we can come over here and detail out and see that the coverage pattern here, you can see that it's omni. In the azimuth plane, it's putting out a circle. We can also see on the football field, when you place it there in proper orientation, it covers the entire football field. 60, 70 meters in every direction. That's the way this access point's been designed. So starting here with no walls and nothing around, you can see it covers a long way. Next up, we're going to switch up and look at what happens if we take that exact same access point and put it in a small medical clinic. Here's one access point in a medical clinic. I've already added walls and areas, and I just want to show you that it's no longer a circle. It was. You saw the exact same access point, same height, same power, nothing changed, and I moved it and just put it here. Now what we're seeing is Ekehau is doing its little math. What it's doing is it's taking the signal strength coming from the AP, pushing it through the pattern of the antenna, and then doing free space loss calculations, covering distance, and then when it hits a wall, looking at the wall material, looking at its RF loss, and changing the, the angle of how that uh, degradation or attenuation is taking place. So we have both free space loss degradation, and you saw on the football field, there's not a lot of that. But here in the medical clinic, you can see the walls are controlling it as well. So if you put an AP in this medical clinic and you put it in the hall, it's going to have a long tail. We used to think what we wanted was a lot of coverage. What we really want is controlled coverage. So if I take this exact same access point, and I just move it so it's not in this hall, and it's not in this hall. I'm just going to move it up and over, out of the way. Now it still covers the area that it was covering before, these rooms in the corner, but it lost its tails. Now here's one of the reasons we don't want tails. Let me move it back into the corner, and you'll see that it has tails. That's, you know, I got coverage. Or you might say, well, I have voice over IP, and so I walk down the hall, I want to have good coverage, and then when I turn the corner, I want coverage from a different AP. That's true. But if we walk down here and say, I was right here at the end of the hall, about to turn, and right now you're getting, oh, uh, sorry, little glasses time. We're getting a 58. So right there, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever for you to roam. You're getting a great neg 58. But if I just walk a little bit further, and if I bring in my ruler tool, you can see that where I was getting a 58, if I walk 1.3 meters away, what's that take? Half a second to walk, maybe a second at the top? If I just move 1.3 meters away from here, and now I'm over here, and now my signal dropped down to 68. Do I need to roam? 
Well, depending on how the client's been programmed, maybe, maybe not. As I turn that corner though, there is probably another AP that's going to have better signal there. And as I turn a corner, I'm going to have to have a quick change. How about if we look up over here? Right here, before I turn the corner, I'm getting doo -doo -doo, a 54. Again, no reason whatsoever to change. If I, again, just walk from this corner and I go down, let's say I walk two, two and a half meters down, and I look at the coverage now, I was a 54, and within two meters away, I dropped to a 78. At a 78, I've got to roam. Well, how much time did I have to do that roam? As I turned the corner, boom, I instantly have to roam. Watch what happens when we just move the AP out of the hallway and back over here. Now, right here, as I'm nearing the corner, I'm getting a 66. I walk a little further, I'm getting a 68. And as I turn the corner, I have this slow loss, not instantaneous. I have enough time to let the client device go, oh, I'm, I'm lowering my signal. Perhaps I should start looking. And then I start looking and then I have some time. I don't have the quick instant loss as you turn around the corner. Every time you put a AP in a hallway, you're going to get that kind of effect. Now let's look at some other places where you might put in APs in hallways because that's what you've always done. Let's look at a hotel. So here's a hotel. And if we only put in two access points, one bottom left, the other one up the upper right, we have fantastic coverage in the hallways. APs in a hall give great hallway coverage. The problem is that's not where the people use Wi-Fi in a hotel. They need to use Wi-Fi in their rooms. Well, this doesn't do a very good job. It barely covers two rooms. So if we look at it and say, well, let me come and add some more APs. Let's go and add an AP and let's put one right here and see if, oh, I can get one more room and right here. I can get another room and right here. I can get another room. And if I did this continually, and I have, so let me jump ahead and show you, this is what it looks like if you put APs in hallways. You can get really decent coverage. Let's come over here and look at the statistics and you can see statistically, we've got what, 98% coverage of the areas of all the rooms by sticking with the halls. You can use a AP in the hallway to cover signal in the rooms. That's not like all the Wi-Fi rules. If you break the rule, it doesn't mean Wi-Fi doesn't work. It's just not a matter of efficiency. So let's come back and say, well, I don't want to do APs in the hallway. How could I do it more efficiently? Now in this one, with all these APs in the hallways, we used a total of 24 APs. You can see up in the left corner here, we used 24 APs. If I switch up and say, no, I don't want that. I want to put APs in the room. Now we have only used 10 APs, less than half the APs, and we achieved a better result. Now the reason for that, and this is true not just in hotels, but in many hospitals, schools, other places, the walls on both sides of a hallway are usually load bearing, meaning they're more dense material, meaning they stop the RF more. The walls between rooms, between classrooms, between hall room, hotel rooms or hospital rooms are less dense. They have lower RF attenuation. So it's easier and cleaner to allow a single AP to go through multiple rooms. And as you can see, we used less than half the APs and achieved a better result. Now, when I've talked to hotel operators, they're like, put them in the hallways. Why? Because we always did it because we have access and we don't want you to have to go back in the hotel room. You know, what if the AP breaks? We don't want to go out in the hotel room. And I asked them, what's the mean time between failure? That's an IT term, MTBF, of, I don't know, a, a dirty towel. And they're like, well, once I explain MTBF to them, they go, well, we change the towels every day. So you're going in the hotel room every day and you want me to not put the AP in the hotel room because our APs have a mean time between failure measured in decades. I don't think that's a legitimate reason. And once you explain that, they kind of get over that one, but they're like, but we've, we've done them in hallways before. And as soon as I show them the difference between 24 APs and I've been in hotels that have AP, these happen to be around five meters apart. 
or 10 APs, amazing how fast they switch their mind up and go, oh, APs and hotel rooms make a lot of sense. So just to recap, if you want to have efficient Wi-Fi, don't put your APs in hallways. And we've had some examples here today to show you live directly in the software, you can see the results. So you can take your own copy of Ekahau, try this, do a design in the halls, do a design not in the halls, and you will see you can achieve better results. Now, there may be times, like you're on a cruise ship and the walls are made of steel and the only place you can not, you cannot get access in the rooms, then you might want to put one on a hall and use a directional antenna and aim it across the hall and shoot it into the room. There might be reasons to break this rule. Most of the time, though, follow the rule. Don't put APs in hallways. If you have more questions, come to WMPros.com. We have a lot more videos and a lot more training, podcasts, videos, WLPC videos. Glad to have you as part of the community.